All right, hello everyone. Here we are back for some more tutorials here. It is going to be some tour play that we're going to be looking at for tour six. And I'm going to set my bag up um, kind of like on the fence between Guardian and Viper because my Viper is quite developed. Uh, much more so than it typically is. You'd see uh, the biggest factor for me, those four yards can come into play. Uh, and as well as so can the curl. So those are the biggest um, contributors as to deciding between these two as to which to pick. It's almost a coin flip for me at this at this state, you know, especially once Guardian gets to a four, um, it's no question uh, that I'll be using that entirely. Um, as it stands now, I feel like it really doesn't matter. I could get away with both for this tour. And I'm just going to kind of set up similar to that. You can see with how my bag is set up here, and I'm about to unlock another silver chest there. I'm going to try to probably get some good Tour 6 chests coming in. I'll probably bulk open quite a few just to kind of keep progressing these clubs. In terms of what needs to be unlocked, uh, not very much anymore when you can look at uh, kind of what I have. Well, a couple things can be unlocked. Endbringer would be nice. B-52, start working on that. Stuff like that. Thor's Hammer we can get from a uh, Tour 6 chest. But let's just set up as 3 as our primary bag. Get underway here. I'm going to try to close this tour out before starting Tour 7. That's typically what I do is try to go in order as much as possible. Uh, it makes your road to the top uh, easier when you take all the holes and do them in a systematic approach here where we're maxing a tour before moving on to the next one. Gives you the best chance to get through the tours. Now, this one is going to be a very large power ball. You can see what my opponent's doing here. He's going to go for that second fairway. Let's see if he's able to pull it off. So far, his aim looks pretty good. I, I, the only th unknown that I don't know is what he's doing with his spin. So let's see how he does. It looks pretty good. He definitely knows what he's doing. It's going to be very challenging to beat somebody willing to use those balls. I have no desire to. Um, I will try to get by with a Titan, but it's going to probably require perfect ball. And what I'll typically do is maybe right around one top spin. Somewhere right in here with some curl. Almost full power. So I was able to get my perfect ball. And hopefully that leads to a fairway drive. Looks like it's going to. So that puts me in a good position. As you can see, my opponent is most likely going to eagle. Anytime you get it into this fairway, it is very easy to get through this hole. But it does require a high level of precision. Any miscalculation or land zone, which may not uh, be I exactly how you planned, can kick it into the rough. Now this looks like my opponent overcorrected there. It looked 
pretty good. It looked like he was going a little bit far, but I didn't think that that was going to happen. Here you can see, you know, there's no real risk, more so than anything. You just want to kind of put this into the green somewhere. That's more or less all I try to do here. I'm thinking somewhere around four rings plus some curl. Just get it somewhere into the green is all I'm trying to do. As anywhere down here makes for an easy eagle. And as you can see, um, if your part opponent makes a mistake, good chance to avoid the shootout and pick up a win. So let's see how he can do from here. This is a very tough pitch under any circumstance, especially into a side wind. Looked like a little bit light on the adjustment, but hit a great ball anyway, so it's definitely going to uh, funnel down. So roll this in, and as you can see, yet again, a good way of avoiding the shootout and picking up the win. And we keep going with our trophy. There we can see we got a gold chest. I am going to free up some more spots here. I'll take care of this six since it's going to be cheap. And I'll start another one over here. Switch, switch up my bag while I'm here. <clears throat> Let's keep going. With the Tour 6 and Tour 7s, this is the point that I really want to start unlocking some good chests. So I am going to try to make sure that, uh, you know, I have some gems to just kind of unlock things, try to get things going. I can, you know, keep building up that sniper, which is going to be favorable. <clears throat> this is a tricky hole. Um, it is helpful to have the... Uh, The QB, a little bit extra curl can keep you out of the sand. Great ball. That might end up pushing. That's, that's one of the reasons I do like the QB right there. Um, because you do have to really get a perfect ball. with the. If I was to set up alternatively, uh, it's much tougher to pull this shot off without having this uh, curl option. I'm going to do is most of the power and you can see that I'm also going to curl it away from the bunker. It's just a little bit easier to keep this out of trouble with the QB with the extra curl. Not to mention it'll bring um, a, a little bit easier path for me for the shootout if I need to get to the shootout. See, my opponent has already unlocked this uh, Amazon, taking advantage of that. Amazon 1, it's going to have the luxury of uh, quite a bit of top spin, but not a lot of ball guide. But it can get you out of trouble in these early tours where you might not, uh, you might not need a lot of ball guide. Now, what I'll typically do is aim over here and curl this. Right around one backspin is typically what I use. Try for about here with a little bit of curl. I got my perfect. Taking the back stop.
I didn't want to get too aggressive there with my opponent so far from the hole. I wanted to make sure foremost, just get my birdie, avoid the shootout. Opponent just wasting time. Should have just uh, forfeited out if uh, one did not hit. So there you can see, roll in the birdie. Pick up the uh, silver chest here. Which I would gem. So quarterback, nice one. Fortunately, Horizon, which we won't need. Let's just keep going here. A couple more matches. Tough hole here. Small mistake here can cost you this one, so you do want to always be careful. This is a very nice wind for me. It does make my life a lot easier getting this wind. What I'll typically do is maybe full curl. Just a little bit of overpower. Getting it over here for a nice angle is what's ideal. Just going to put my grid on. I notice I wasn't using it, although not essential. As you can see, I've been playing without it. Just going to turn it on. It's a lot tougher to do that shot with an uh, extra mile. Can be done. Uh, the best way for my opponent to pull it off would definitely be with a three-side spin ball. It gives you the, the best possible chance to be able to pull this off. Now that's a different approach. Looks like he's basically trying to blast it and maybe use some kind of spin to keep it in the fairway. All bouncing it off the rough, but rolls into the sand. From the sand, it's going to be tough to get birdie, especially with early clubs. With a Spitfire 7, you may be able to uh, work some magic from there. But uh, taking that approach will be definitely too risky otherwise. So you can see with where I'm going to try to aim. I go maybe about a ring and a half. Maybe just a little bit of curl. <clears throat> Looks like I had the line just a little bit too much on the backspin. Or I need to just put that guide just a little bit higher up. Uh, nevertheless, you know, I expect to uh, still be able to avoid shootout here. So there you can see, opponent does keep it in the fairway, which is going to give him at least a shot. It is pretty straightforward, and depending on how easy the next wind is, still possible. So that is what I recommend. You know, if you get yourself in trouble, just do what you can to make sure that you uh, get out of it.
So sure enough, there we have it. Able to pick up the win here. Get another chest. Another gold. So with that being the case, I'm gonna have to gem something else. typically like this hole um, more times than not I can essentially just play it for a four shot hole it's, it's very hard in the early stages especially with that wind I won't have to worry about my opponent too much there at all so I can just kind of do this on purpose just kind of blast this down here as far as possible <clears throat> I do try to hug the left just a little bit it kind of opens up my options. Uh, I can still potentially go around to the left, or if absolutely need be, um, I'll just take it up here straight. Just kind of keeps my options open. 7,000 games. So definitely, as, as you can see, you know, I'm just over 200. And uh, 135 of those are tournament-based. So keep in mind that I only have, what is that, 70 games? 80 games that I've played in tour play. Opponent uses a kingmaker. Wow, straight in the face. I do think I can get it over here. Just barely. Worst part about this is the precision aspect. I need to make sure that I'm somewhat close to perfect ball to make sure that it does roll into the fairway. <clears throat> So going for that island would definitely be risky. Not sure he'll be able to get there. Going over that way is going to be tough because you can see he kind of played the angle where rolling into that fairway is very tough to do. So opponent kind of made this a little bit tougher We'll see if he'll be able to pull this off or not. Looks like he clipped the tree there with that good ball. So that'll definitely make things tougher. Getting to the green probably won't be happening. So if I can just basically play this safe, I'll basically play away and just make sure that it kind of goes up into the green more so than anything here. So somewhere up in here. Typically, I might try to get just a little bit more aggressive. Not going to do that this time because all I need is the score <clears throat> of a four to really put some pressure on my opponent. So I'm going to make sure that I don't do anything too much with the curl. Just make sure that my ball guide is away from that slope so it doesn't roll down into the sand because I can see that my opponent's going to have troubles with not hitting it into the fairway.
So, very tricky uh, winds that we got on this one. But you can see, you know, just turning this into a four shot hole is all you really need to do. There would have been really no threat of my opponent getting to the green in two, especially with that first T win that we got. If it is a tailwind, you know, it, there would be potential for that to happen. But it would probably require, you know, a little bit extra ball to make it happen. And what I like to do is try to, you know, get, get by as with as little as possible. So you see that I kind of just change my play. I don't even go with a Titan because I'm not really worried about distance whatsoever. So it just kind of saves me the ball. Backbone Houdini. And we are over the halfway point for this tour. I'm going to just keep grinding, try to... Try to keep getting some of these gold chests in here. And as long as my gem count still stays pretty good, you can see I don't really play too many matches. I do play a fair amount of matches. But what I'll try to do is keep my match count down so my gem balance kind of offsets. So, you know, I might gem some chests here. Use maybe 100, 100 and 200 maybe gems. So maybe 10 chests I'll balk open. But then I'll sit the account out to make to recoup those 200 gems. So you see the trade-off. And typically, you know, I've been, since I'm in a clan, I've been getting about 10, 10 gems per uh, free chest that I open. So for every 10 or so free chests that I open, I'm getting... Um, So 10 chests would probably take about two days to earn 100 gems back. Now, let's see if I can get to the green here. Very tough to get to this green in two. Try to make it happen now. Especially with my opponent's mistake. I'll try to capitalize. Use some curl. Of course, my top spin. And sure enough, get it to the fairway. And then more so than anything, I'll just try to make sure that uh, I get to the green or about the green. For my second shot, you can see that the reason that I'm willing to kind of change my bag up is to avoid the shootouts. I don't want to go to shootout with extra mile. If I see my opponent makes a mistake and I can avoid um, getting there, that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, or, you know, if I need to... You know, if I didn't find a wind that would have been to my liking, then I'd just lay up and try to prepare for shootout. But if I can just take advantage of this situation a little bit and make my life easier on myself, all I'm going to try to do is put this into the green. I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize the hole. So you're going to see that I'm going to use very minimal curl because I'd rather just play it into the green then risk going for this shot. All I'm probably going to need here is eagle to beat my opponent. So I'm prepared for a great ball right to go more on towards the hole and hopefully out of the sand. So you can see that I played away from the hole intentionally there because I really need to avoid that shootout with the bag setup that I have. I don't have my QB on anymore, which is going to make things a little bit tougher if we get a driver hole. Particularly the southern pines that's around that lake because I'm really limited with the amount that I can curl that one. And you can see my opponent has a three side spin ball which gives them a little bit of an edge. If they were to get that, they'd have extra side spin over me. But here you can see we avoid the shootout 
and uh, you know, just take care of business. You can see when you play the tour in order and don't try to come back, um, you know, the matches are relatively fair. You can see that my opponents aren't exactly, you know, they're, they're kind of plain sloppy, which you expect with guys that don't have a thousand trophies. You know, if they were consistent players, they'd have more trophies than that. So you do yourself a disservice if you play tours out of order, and that's why I'm not skipping up or even trying to go in the seven at all. And I do want to just take a look here. I want to make sure that I get up into pro one so I can compete in pro next tournament. You know, I have, uh, you know, a strong desire to progress my bag and clubs. If I play in the pro tournament, it gives me the opportunity to get Thor's hammer as a reward. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And ideally, I'd like to unlock it before the tournament chess. So that way my chess maybe has Thor clubs in there. But if, you know, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves, worst case scenario, it's a good, it's also a good place for it to unlock for the first time as well. In your chess reward, a lot of times you will get some club up unlocks if, especially if you have a fair amount of them that aren't unlocked, will typically be more inclined to give you those. So once again, we'll reset the bag. Keep going with the tour here. In theory, 10, 10 more consecutive wins will close this tour as well. <clears throat> So win-loss can, can come in to be kind of huge. Now, I don't, what I try to do here is I try to, you know, not play too aggressive. You can see that I'm, you know, in terms of power, I'm going to kind of do kind of the minimum necessary. I'm not going to try to force this issue here. <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of curl it around, get it past the shadows. That's all I need to do. Once it's past the shadows, I can get to the green. You'll also see that I use the QB. It's a little bit safer than extra mile. However, once you have an extra mile six, you're going to have quite a bit of distance. I wouldn't imagine my opponent's going to struggle too much with that. Now, the only thing that he can do here is just try to blast it too hard. This can, you know, lead to precision loss. This is a very aggressive line. If he would have great balled it to the right, you know, potentially put that, that shot in jeopardy. But as you can see, perfect, perfect tee shot. But you can see my minimal shot is you know, arguably just as good in, in reality. There's, there's not real, a real threat that my opponent's going to make that shot. So what I'm going to try to do is some curl, try to land right around here. I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of three rings plus curl. As you can see, we're going into the tree, but the curl's going to bring it out of the tree. <clears throat> Just a little bit too much curl. But we're in there safe for eagle. You know, it's you're not going to lose the albatross too, too many times. Especially in these early tours. You know, guys don't have the clubs. Um, and it's just, you know, a lot tougher to make it. But you can see that I can make do with QB Quasar essentially the exact same as my opponent can do with Extra Mile Titan. So you'll see that I'll do the minimalistic approach because I should have a favor, favorable uh, advantage on the shootout. So that's typically, you know, my motivator as to why I do the things that I do. Um, and I would recommend that you guys use the same kind of logic. You know, think about the, you know, the best clubs that you can kind of get through you know, we don't need distance. It's not an important attribute. 
only bring that into the equation if distance becomes the deal breaker between winning and losing. So, and this is the perfect opportunity where I will have a good advantage. You know, I can even go off this island. The only thing that I'm kind of missing is backspin. I may not quite have enough. It's close. What I'll typically do is maybe use this backstop up here. Do with some curl. It's a lot easier for me to go off this island than it is for an extra mile to go off this island. As you can see, I can probably great ball this and hit the, uh, I'll still hit the island. So sure enough, I did hit a great ball. The only thing that it's probably gonna do is bring my ball just a little bit more left. So you can see that it kind of just shoots over to the left, but a very good shot. Uh, a a extra mile club would never be able to great ball off that island ever <laughs> and unless your aim was really shoddy so um, no luxury for my opponent to do the same he's going to need perfect ball and he's also going to have to know the uh, exact amount of spin he'd have to mirror my spin you can see he's not doing that so his shot is never going to stop it's going to go over the green even if he does get his perfect ball if he hits a great ball, well, it looks like he might not have aimed because it looks like he still hit the island. So he might have underplayed the win there, which is a common mistake. So he would have probably hit the right edge of the island. Another milestone unlocked. Thousand trophies. Fifteen gems for that one. We can use that. Go ahead and unlock this again. Extra mile card. The sooner we can get that up to a five, the better. The sooner we can get it up to a six, even better. Um, you know, probably I'll be switching from that club. As soon as Thor unlocks, I essentially switch over permanently. It has more backspin. Uh, you know, typically right around the similar amount of curl uh, at a two or three. So, um, you know, if I can get my Thor to a two or three, I'd much rather use that than an extra mile anything because it just has better attributes. It's much more accurate and it has more backspin, which makes it much better for, you know, in the event that you do need driver shootouts. So let's keep going here. Oops, oops, oops. As I mentioned, you know, I'm not going to go out of order, and I highly recommend not going out of order. Not a huge fan of getting this hole. This is a tough hole. I like to play my opponent, so I like to have uh, the second tee. If I get to go second, it's ideal. Oh, nope, this is actually, I, I was thinking hole six. Well, it'd still be nice to know if my opponent goes for that other side and somehow by a miracle gets there. Well, that, that would really make my life a lot harder. I don't think he'd be able to do that anyway. Even if he did get to the other side there, uh, very hard to hit the green with these early clubs. But you'll see that uh, th this is actually a good hole. I like this one. So this lets me use quarterback. You can see my opponent's using extra mile, but why? Why use extra mile? It's, it's obviously unnecessary because of the fact that uh, distance means nothing off this tee box. You'll see I probably can take a, a quarterback and not even need power. 
Looks like my opponent is having connection issues here. He has about five seconds to get back in this game. There he is. And there he drops again. So I'm not sure if he's coming back or not. I'm just going to go ahead and play this as I would expect, which is about no power right here. As I mentioned, more so than anything, just focus on putting it in the fairway. You can see I don't need any power or anything. It's a fair way off the tee. Let's see if my opponent's back yet. Hard to tell. Looks like he is. So here you can see using a katana. Oh, that great ball might be costly. You can see it's leaning. So sure enough, there's the rough. But I'd like to avoid shootout with my opponent. You can see he has a katana. It's going to make my life a little bit tougher to beat him. What I typically do here is try to blast this up and curl it as hard left as possible. So that's what you can see that I'm doing. Hopefully, even if I did clip this rough, which it looks like I'm not going to, I would hope that it would still just kind of funnel out into the fairway. So primary objective, you know, just essentially avoid shootout. My opponent would, would have a tough time, you know, if you if you do drive it in the uh, rough, especially with early clubs, getting to the green from there, well, that's going to be a little bit more favorable. You can see he got the wind, which would have probably made his life just a little bit easier. What I'll typically do is just a little bit of backspin, try to use this backstop behind the hole. To go maybe about four rings here or so, three to four. Just basically use the slope, funnel it down. It looks like I didn't have the line. It's hard with no ball guide, but I wasn't necessarily too worried about it. Uh, I got that stroke because of his shot clock violation. So I will be able to avoid the shootout, but here you'll see, you know, let's, oh, oh, I forgot we're not on the same wind. So you can see that my opponent, you know, it is going to be just a little bit tougher here because now shooting from the fourth shot, the wind's in the face, which actually makes this a little bit tougher to pull off. Let's see how this plays out. Looks like it would have rolled up there. But a great ball would have, you know, potentially put that in the sand. So it does require a good level of precision to kind of avoid that mistake from being costly. But here you can see, pick up the birdie and avoid the shootout. My opponent has a katana. It would have kind of provided a little bit of an advantage in the event that my opponent needed that. It could provide an advantage for him. Well, let's go ahead, clear this out. Six cards this time, eh? Means it has a ball in it. That or a club unlock. Looks like I ran out of these balls. Let's go ahead and just gem a few more of those. But as I mentioned, you know, I'll just kind of, you know, gradually play this tour. Even if I was to finish and close this tour, that's all I would do for the week. And I'm just going to re-get that gem balance back. I'm just going to use the rest of the week to, you know, open 30 free chests, for example. 
for the remainder of the week and get that balance back up so I'm ready for the next tournament. Um, and another thing that you can do, you know, if you want to play more, for example, you know, you can do two or you can do two or three different accounts. You could bring two or three accounts up at the same time. Oh wow, that's an interesting wind. <sighs> that's a worst case scenario. So I don't know if I want to chance it with that wind. It's pretty much as bad as it could have been. So with that being the case, I am going to just kind of ball up to a Titan because I don't want to, to forfeit this hole. So you'll see that I just do kind of the minimum that I have to to try to ensure that I get this into the fairway around the tree. And you can see I'd rather waste a Titan in this wind than switch up to extra mile. Notice that conscious decision that I made because if I need that quarterback for the shootout, it's going to be much better to have that than it will be to have the extra mile. Look at my opponent, extra mile seven already. You can see they are a big tournament player, lots of top tens, uh, but they only play rookie which means that they can only progress their extra mile. That's not necessarily going to help you, even if you get your extra mile up to an eight. I mean, that's it's a decent club at best. <clears throat> As I mentioned, you just need to get it down to these shadows. So wind dependent with a basic ball, if my opponent gets wind straight in the face, it could make things challenging. Um, but, uh, you know, should be okay to be able to do some kind of power shot to still get his shot to the hole here. Now what I'm going to typically do is try to bend it around the tree here, as you can see. Something like this. You can also see where I'm trying to aim. A ring and a half, almost just a little bit more than a ring and a half. Perfect ball. Slide this in just a little bit offline, a little bit too much on the adjustment. But the Titan should give me an advantage on the shootout. My opponent is going to have to somewhat take advantage of this shot here. You can see Big Dog 7. This guy really has me out clubbed. Um, you can see he's a big rookie tournament player. Uh, you know, a he has like seven or eight good finishes in rookie tournaments. You know, they're top tens, which is going to provide you the opportunity to get things like big dog and extra mile up. But they're also kind of weak clubs. And my opponent, very close there, almost clipped the rough. So almost basically shot himself in the foot. But I'm going to have a very good advantage. Um, I, I have a better, I have a better wood and a better iron or um, and a better driver than he does on the shootout, which does give me just a little bit of an edge. Not to mention I have the Titan on. So, but with that being said, I still need to make sure that I take care of business on the shootout. It's still my job to take advantage of that advantage that I have and make sure that I don't make some kind of error. So, and that's where learning these shootouts are going to be the most important. Now, this is only, we've only played like two, maybe two or three shootouts. I, it was either two or three. But you can see, you know, that we're getting through a lot of these holes without needing the shootout, which is nice. Nope, oh, we got wind straight in the face. So, what I, what I typically am going to do with wind straight in the face, um, I may go over here. As I mentioned, you know, it's going to be my job to take care of business here. So down into the sand, typically three rings plus curl. Perfect ball. Just a bit too much speed. So not the best shots, but not the worst either. It's a very tough shot to pull off, especially with basic ball. You 
It's extremely tough with basic ball to pull this shot off. So there you can see it's going to clip the rough. Didn't use any curl or anything. We're able to uh, win that one. Typically what I'll do is maybe half to one bar of top spin, uh, but I did crank it up there. Uh, the reason being, uh, I wanna make sure that it uh, gets to the hole straight into the wind and it doesn't clip the bunker on the second hop so i wanted to just be very sure especially going first that you don't make a catastrophic mistake for instance if if our shots were reversed and i hit my opponent's shot well i could essentially just play away from the hole and just try to beat 16 yards <clears throat> so that's what you want to avoid you know giving your opponent the ability to be able to do that This is a tough hole, tough hole to decide what to do. So here you can see we get a tailwind and my opponent actually has expert experience. With that being said, I may have to switch to QB to extra mile and go for this, which is not something that I typically like to do, but I find this to kind of just be a requirement more so than anything, because it's such an easy wind. So what I'll typically do is aim off the left of my bullseye, maybe go six-ish rings somewhere over here. Hook the ball when taking a tee shot. First time it says I've done that. <laughs> so here you can see, hopefully it rolls off onto the fringe. Sure enough, it does. So I do have the down and one. I expect to be able to make the down and one. It's going to try to blast it straight, it looks like, which typically just leads to the ball going too far right. Oh, wow. Is that going to roll off the cliff? Oh, I can't believe that. That was a pretty bad break. Um, I, I noticed, you know, he didn't curl it or anything, but I'm still surprised that that happened. So here you'll see, I just kind of play the front of the hole a little bit. Make sure that I don't short hit this. Don't even need to hit my perfect ball. It should just go right into the pin. Easy eagle. One of the things that you'll want to pay attention to, you'll see my opponent does have a katana. You'll want to make sure that you don't re-tee off with a katana. You'd, if if you were in this position, it's probably best for you just to switch balls. It will waste the second ball. Anytime you and you can see, it looks like my opponent he switched to Titan. So now he's going to waste this Titan. This is a waste. Of, so you use two balls, and this has to go in the tie. So anytime that's the case, it would be much better off to. Uh, just put on a basic ball or just forfeit because that wastes both balls when you do that. So 
So you can see we are climbing up the ranks here. Getting ourselves close. The hook trophy that we just uh, opened up here. Let's go ahead and gem this chest again. Some more quarterback. The more that quarterback gets up, the better. If I can get it up to an E, it's going to be ideal. Similarly with that rock, the, the more I can get that rock up, the better too. Those are going to be prizes that are only able to be won, both those clubs, in pro tournament or higher. That's one of the biggest reasons those in the Hornet and Thorn are pretty much kind of the, the four main clubs that I like to, because you'll actually get those and also uh, Guardian. So if you're playing in pro or higher tournament, those are kind of the most important clubs because a lot of times you'll get those in one of your prize chests or sometimes two or three of those in those because they're the, uh, you know, the more, con they're, they're the, uh, you know, the rare cards, which are a little bit more common than rare. So they show up, um, you know, definitely uh, you, you'll, you'll get a good opportunity to get a large number of those especially for top 10s. So let me switch back. Just put the third bag on as my primary. That's my default bag that I'd like to use for this tour. I only switch if I have to. And especially shooting first there, I didn't know what to expect from my opponent. I didn't even know what clubs he has. He could have had extra mile eight. You know, he was he's in expert, for example. Similarly with my opponent here, you know, same thing can apply. I don't know what to expect from my opponent, which can really make my life tough. So I kind of got to force the issue here. So that's more or less what I'm going to do. There's five rings. I'm going to try to go maybe seven, eight rings here. We're going to try to blast this relatively full with as much curl as I can and just try to land very close to the rough and curl it over enough hopefully hold into the fairway. So you can see I was able to pull that off, but it required a Titan to get it over here. <clears throat> it's very tough to, with that wind to get an extra mile over there. One of the things that you might want to do is keep the top spin down. So you can see my opponent just going with uh, two bars. That'll that'll prove potentially helpful to his case to getting over here and staying in the fairway. But it's still going to be very tough. And it'll typically make you have to have a longer second shot. So you can see he does stay in, but it's going it's, it's basically backing him up. If we get wind in the face here, it's going to be tough for him to get to the green. <clears throat> but we got a tailwind, so he should be good. So we will make it to uh, shoot out together. Unless I make this, this is actually a very easy wind. You'll want to try to take advantage of this. Hopefully get your perfect ball. Because this is a very good opportunity to make a shot here. So very small ring adjustment that I'm going to go here. Not even a ring. It's a... Uh, Severely uphill, so very small ring adjustment. We also got, you know, one of the easiest wins we could have got. So I expect this to at least lip out. You know, it might not go in, but it should at least be right on the cup. And, you know, it didn't quite hit the lip. I, I, I didn't have my ball guide. And it did just shoot just a little bit to the right, but, you know, a very good opportunity with that wind. <clears throat> So it looks like we will most likely go to shoot out unless my opponent's able to get this one. Um, it's maybe tough to do. I don't. I'm trying to think. Big Dog Five does it have? Does it have as much backspin as it needs? And I'm not sure. It's going to require three-ish bars. I, I would imagine that it probably does. Yeah. So you should be okay. Uh, you really need to use all of that though. Um, otherwise, it's going to come in much too fast. But you can see the wind, this is as small as a wind as it could have been. It's only a 1.0. 1 
and that's the absolute smallest for tour one. And the fact that it's a dead straight win gave us, it gave us a very good opportunity to be able to hold this one. And it looks like my opponent actually did. He albatrossed it. Look at that. So he just slammed the pin, and sure enough, it goes in. I try to slow mine in with actually good pace and end up losing. So crazy the misfortune that I just had. To lose like that, you know, it, it really, it, it, it was all about that wind. You know, if you don't take advantage of an easy wind, the opponent just slams the pin, and it, sure enough, it goes right in. So very bad luck for me on that one. Not only my misfortune for not being able to get that win play to be able to play it right, but also the fact that it was just such an easy win that all you have to do is just aim at the pin and get your perfect ball. And there's a good chance that even with a misplay, you know, you slam it into the pin and it drops. And then mine, you know, just, you can see it just breaks off to the right for whatever reason. <clears throat> So what I'll typically do on this one, I, I do like going second. I like playing my opponent. Wow, 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 that's interesting. So from there, eh, it's makeable, but uh, it's not easy. What I like to do, I like to not go for this green. So I may just uh, play my opponent here and maybe just try to, try to replicate what they did with the QB. Let's try to uh, get it into the fairway somewhere. Might be my play here. <clears throat> that great ball might be a waste of a Titan ball. Uh, it looks like I'm in the fairway. So that may be, you know, that may be a good thing. Opponent has the down and one as well. Very tough thing to hold out with. Pretty much got to go for the dunk. We do have a side wind here. Typically, you know, I might, I, I'd like to use a quasar on this, but I was fine with using a Titan. Um, I wanted to try to get it up onto this fairway. As you can see, it did just crawl onto the fairway because I figured there was a good chance that I could pitch it in. Now, we did get a very terrible wind. This is probably as tough as it could have been. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do is find min. I'm actually kind of a little bit closer to mid club, which I'm going to assume is somewhere around three and a half per ring. Pretty much the only shot that I would go for here is a dunk. Thinking maybe just under two rings. Yeah, I caught a great ball, so it's gonna shoot off to the side and we'll make the putt. So we didn't get the best win. Let's say, you know, the, the wins were reversed there. You know, and I and and I got the win. Wind on that hole to be like a one or a two or a three, whatever. You know, there's a good chance that I can make that, especially with a perfect ball. But with a side wind, uh, the one thing that I do like about the side wind, you'll see that the possibility of me slamming the pin there is much lower because um, it's not like a tailwind or anything where it's going to hit the pin and not go in. It, typically, if I hit the pin, I'm going to have my distance down and it's going to go into the hole. So I don't have to worry about in side winds. Typically, as long as you're very good with how much power you use to not overpower your shot, um, there's a good chance that you can make that. Oh, wow, super tiny wind here. Opponent only has a 40% wind percent. Typically when you play the front of the green here, you need more backspin than my opponent's doing. So I'm not sure that this is going to stop, but another thing that you can do is you can use the right slope here and almost get it to check up 
unnaturally off the slope. So it looks like he's actually kind of playing that shot because he doesn't have enough spin. So let's see how he plays, like how he pull, how well he pulls that off because it'll typically kind of decide what I do. Uh, he's a little bit deep. So typically I may try to just play the exact same shot that my opponent did. I expect to be able to get it closer than three some yards playing off the front of this green and just using my backspin. So you'll see that I have actually more backspin than my opponent does. Which provides me an opportunity to hit it in here close. So all I'm trying to do is just get it up here towards the hole. And sure enough, good enough for the win. Guardian, we got a Guardian. I'd like to switch down, hopefully be able to start using some Quasars again. So let's see how this plays with my opponent. This can kind of make or break what I need to do if he pulls this off. Very tough win to pull this off, though. So there it is in the rough. Um, one of the things that I can do is I can go for it over there. And if I pull it off, uh, you know, I can pull off a win. If I don't pull it off, not the end of the world. So maybe worth, you know, taking the shot and going for this. Just with the with the knowledge knowing if I pull this off, you know, I essentially win. So what I'm going to do is play about two rings and then also utilize that curl that I could see that I, I needed because it was kind of aimed over on the right edge of the fairway over there. So here you can see we're able to keep it in the fairway. And it should be a good opportunity for us to just get to the green in two, pick up the win. So all we got to do is get it to the green, avoid the sand. Since that's all that matters, uh, the, the biggest thing that I recommend is not trying to do too much here. So you'll see uh, very little. Um, I'm not going to get too aggressive. I'm just going to try to put it kind of on this line at about three rings here. And I don't care if it's... Uh, you know, not perfect. I just need to make sure that foremost it's into the green and not the sand. And the wind effect should actually help that to just kind of pull it left. So I don't mind if it's way over here to the left. I just don't want to go in the sand. <clears throat>
So roll it in up the hill. I'll knock another chest here. Getting to the point that I kind of want to cut this stream off, but I'm also close to closing out the tour. I'd like to play for one more gold chest, though, if if at all possible. Even though it really doesn't matter technically, you know, I can. I'm getting down to about 300 gems. I do want to at least kind of keep something in the bank there. I'm also five matches from closing this tour. Five straight wins I would need. I'd, it would only be three had uh, had I not lost that one match. So what you'll typically see here is I'll switch balls. And we'll play this very similarly to what we what you already saw me do. This is a very similar wind. Just blast it up here to the left, kind of as far as possible with QB. There's no real threat of an extra mile being able to, uh, to to slaughter me with that kind of wind. So no matter what my opponent does, don't really have to worry about eagle for the most part. It, it's going to be possible, but uh, it, would take, it, it would take a really good opponent and a very good third shot into the green. You'll never be able to, uh, even with the best balls in the game, be able to get to the green in two with that wind. Looks like my opponent actually has similar clubs to me. This is only an extra mile four. That's all I have. With them going basic ball, that does uh, make my life a little bit easier. Good, a uh, good chance that uh, you know four could could potentially win depending on the wins, because it's not as easy for my opponent to uh, to get to the shootout here. The wind's being like this. So what I'm going to do is just aim over here, curl it around. No top spin. Just gently roll it into this fairway. Make sure that I can get to the green. Very tough to duck the trees here. But sometimes you can deflect it off of them and get it to, to still roll up into the fairway, especially with a lot of topspin. Let's just see how this plays out. He actually hit the fairway. That's the problem of trying that shot when you hit the fairway. Or if you would have hit the rough, it might have rolled through that fairway. <clears throat> So once again, as I mentioned uh, last time, very similar. I'm just going to essentially just play the slope, um, not worry about what my opponent's doing, not, not do anything that's going to send this ball down towards the bunker in any fashion. It's going to kind of play away and just use the slope because I already see that I have my opponent at a disadvantage and Bernie's going to win. So this one might not even reach that fairway this time. Because it's into the face. Oh, just rolls in. So there's our birdie. It's almost impossible to make this shot. Especially with a basic ball, when you don't have the side spin, you'd have to do it with kind of a uh, interesting curl shot. Typically, you'll want more backspin than that. 
That's to give you a little bit more control over the ball. You can see it comes in too hot over the green. Gold chest. There it is. So I might just call it a wrap for today, guys. You can see where uh, where I ended up. I'm 210 out of 225. Did lose that one match. But you can see we're getting close to uh, closing this. We're, you know, four wins away. Essentially, I can wait for those chests to clear out, and then I can just put in four more. And if they're all wins, I'll be able to close this tour, and we'll be ready for Tour 7. So, um, you know, keep keep plugging away at this. As you can see, it's just kind of a grind more than anything. You just need to uh, kind of take it day by day and play slow. You can see I don't try to force too many rounds into a single day or even week, for instance. You know, last week was the tournament. I didn't even play tour at all on this account. So you can see I'm just pacing myself. Here you can see that I will promote up to rookie one. It'll be my or into pro one. It'll be my first attempt in the uh, pro division. As soon as I get there, I'm going to go straight to pro tournaments and start trying to, uh, you know, just kind of keep grinding away. If uh, you know, let's just take a look uh, at my ball inventory real quick. So my kingmaker situation, 38 balls there, and we have 95 titans still. So this is a very good inventory. You can see that I only have a top 10, a top three, and a, and a win in rookie. So with that, I haven't spent a dime on this game or account. There's been no money spent. So you'll see that I have 10 katanas. I had to buy these with gems. So I used 180 gems to, be, to make that happen. Um, and I did that for the whole side spin. I want to make sure that I do have that inventory in case that I need it. So I did pick those up. So you can see I have 10 of those balls. Other than that, I have these vintage, which were free. But at the very minimum, I would use this in pro. And typically, I won't even use these in pro. I'll typically maybe save them for expert because this wind reduction, being able to decrease wind by 45%, it, it, it's very not important on wins that are like seven. It's more important for wins that are like 12. Because if you can get 40% reduction on 12, you know, it reduces it to a seven, for example. Um, which if I have in pro, I can essentially use a 25% ball and get it down to a five. So we're still talking about being able to reduce wind uh, kind of lower than the expert tournament um, with, you know, and that's and that's one of the biggest reasons that, uh, you know, saving those balls, those high wind resistant balls are going to be your best bet. And hopefully in the meantime, you know, Playdemic gives away some more balls as well. But you can kind of see where my inventory is. All those Marlin Navigator Quasars, the, the inventory is very low. It only costs 60 gems, though, to get nine of them. But what, how many games did we play here? About 10, 12? So I played about 12 games for you guys. So I basically played with 60 gems of balls today, maybe 70. So if I play with 70 gems worth of balls, all I have to do is sit that account out for two days to recoup all that. Okay, so keep things like this in mind. Uh, and, uh, you know, just keep plugging away. You can see that uh, very, very possible to do it. And, you know, I'm just trying to give you kind of the best strategies to be able to navigate through this game uh, without being able to spend money on it. So um, good luck out there. Let me know how your progress is going and be on the lookout uh, for Tour 6 to be completed and Tour 7 to be started. Uh, I don't know if it'll be this week. I may just sit this out into the tournament, but I may just towards the end of the week, put up one more stream and we'll just kind of close tour six out. Um, so you guys can see what it looks like finished out. So good luck with your rounds. Let me know and uh, take care guys.